Smolly Wave Springs reduce spring heights by up to 50%. Our Spiralox retaining rings have no ears to interfere with an assembly. Over 10,000 standard parts are stocked in carbon and stainless steel with samples readily available to test in your application. Today on Engineering Newswire, we're creating nanoscale fingerprints, building a fully functional desktop human, and building a fleet of half-drone, half-satellite stratobuses. Watch Chris say that one. It does not do well. It's bad. <laughs> Crashing, crashing blimps, phallic symbols. It's, it's a weird newswire already. What? A project known as Stratobus has emerged from Thales in France, and they weren't kidding when they called it a bus. The concept sets this thing at about 300 feet in length and 75 feet in diameter. Plus, it looks like the Hindenburg. Hopefully with more success. Using a blimp-like design, the Stratobus has a simple launch mechanism. You let it go. While it stays in permanent contact with a light ground station. Once released, this thing ascends to a stationary position at 65,000 feet in the lower stratosphere. Suddenly, Stratobus doesn't seem like such an innovative name. Didn't Felix jump from, like, twice that height? At this height, the Stratobus can provide autonomous, almost undetectable observation for everything from military applications to meteorological analysis. That's not to mention the potential for use as a go-between for satellite communication or as highly mobile cellular towers. It gets better. This thing can resist wind gusts up to 90 miles per hour thanks to its low-power adaptable engine system that is powered by a solar array that rotates to follow the sun. The solar panels are then coupled to a solar power amplification system patented by Thales, which leads to an ultralight reversible fuel cell for energy storage. Stratobus totes the potential of precise autonomous observation and communications assistance, and the first prototype from Thales is expected in the next five years. Then maybe Verizon will buy one and I can get some decent cell phone coverage. Man can dream. Terrible between Chicago in Chicago, but it's gone now. I don't even know where I am right now. So we have desktop computers, printers, 3D printers, and now human bodies. A new project from the Los Alamos National Laboratory is on the brink of revolutionizing the way new drugs and toxic agents are screened on desktop surrogate human organs. Using highly sensitive mass spectrometry technologies, the Athena Project team is developing four human organ constructs. A lung that breathes, a heart that pumps, a liver that metabolizes, and a kidney that excretes, each based on a miniaturized platform. Each organ will be about the size of a smartphone screen, and Athena's body of interconnected organs will fit on a desk. According to senior scientist Rashi Iyer, the hope is that this perfusion system will help move us away from animal and petri dish testing. The ultimate goal of this five-year, $19 million, multi-institutional effort is to create a dynamic system that more realistically mimics the human physiology than those static human cells in a dish. Cats. <laughs> About 40% of pharmaceuticals fail their clinical trials, and the effects of thousands of chemicals on the human body are still unknown. Athena's realistic, rapid screening system could provide more accurate screening and greater clinical trial success. With all the advances in technology, counterfeiting of high-end electronics is continuing to grow. So a group of South Korean researchers have created unique patterns from tiny, randomly scattered silver nanowires. These nanoscale fingerprints have an average length of 10 to 50 micrometers and have the potential to be used not only on high-end electronics, but also used on drugs, credit cards, and banknotes. The fingerprints would cost less than a dollar to produce per single pattern by synthesizing a solution containing individual silver nanowires, coating the nanowires with silica, doping them with specific fluorescent dyes, and then randomly dropping them onto a transferable film made from flexible polyethylene terephthalate. PET! Which pet? Polyethylene terephthalate. Pet. Pet. 
According to the researchers, the fingerprints are almost impossible to replicate because of the natural randomness of their creation and the difficulty associated with manipulating such small materials. The researchers also believe the fingerprints could be tagged with a unique ID or barcode which could facilitate a quick search in a database and ease the process of authentication or counterfeit identification. And that was that. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm David Manti and this has been your Engineering Newswire. Stratobus. 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 I want to say Stratobus. 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 The Stratobus has. Reading it is fine, but when I say it out loud, yeah. it's weird. Like, yeah. Stratosphere bus. And the Stratobus has a simple launch mechanism. Stratobus. Is it? Stratobus. Stratobus. Stratobus has. <laughs> At this height, the Stratobus can. <laughs> <laughs>